Okay. Um, thanks for the all the <laughs> the questions, Carl, that you sent through. So let's let's get going and see which ones we need to look at, what we need to work out. Um, okay, so this was the first one, and you'll see it's again the mix of of all the different ones. So let's just see how far we get, um, and you know, hopefully get more than 50% this time. Okay, so in this question, they talk about the buyer of a new car makes a down payment of 20% um, on the price of a car and finances the balance by making equal payments at the end of each month for the next four years. The interest rate of, okay, so what would that interest rate have been? <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, let, um, no, don't worry, because I see the time thing was everywhere in your question, so obviously they put it straight. Okay, let's quickly check. So that was the car. Now I put both in here. So there's enough other ones that we will get to in any case if it is not. Okay, so a very similar kind of. Don't worry, There's, there is enough of the other one. So I'm going to take this one out. Um, if what, what one would have done in any case is, um, so let me just show you what, what we would have done. So you would have add that as a, as a PMT, so that would have been your monthly monthly installments. Then it would have been for twelve twelve months. Um, but for four years, so it would have been a period of 48 months. Then you would have your interest that we don't know. Um, and then you would have asked for a present value. OK, so then you would get your present value. But then you still need to, so that is your present value with 80% of the value of a car. So you will still need to add 20% to get to the final answer. So that is nearly, for this one, what nearly was the catch. So if I look at some of these answers, it might have been that that nearly plus that gives you that answer. Seems like it. So it might be that I'm just quickly going to check. Yes, so if let's say that was the full the the, the present value, um, so two four 
five nine three zero oh, divided by four. OK, so your present value would have been two four five. Nine three zero. Oh. So if you divide that by um, I just divided by four, but four over five. Um, because you want that fifth component. Um, so divide by four gives you your four years. That is your fifth one. Um, so if you add those together, you get C as for answer. OK, so. If you get something like that again. Um, just remember they want that the price of a new car, not just your present value. Okay, so hopefully that is what what the answer was in the end as well. Okay, but I think there is another one on our home loan that we will also have to work out. Okay, this was the one also that we got last time. Um, there was what 158 customers. I said we need to calculate the standard deviation. Carl, you still said on what page? Let me quickly just check <laughs> where that was. So maybe even still in the chat that you said which page it was something like 300, uh, 365. Let's quickly go back to that 356. So we okay, that's <laughs> you, you can share the Excel with us. Okay, so. On page, and that is page three, four, three. There is your your standard deviation, and okay, but that is not for a table. That is just for. And then on page three, four, six as well. More three, four, six. Okay, so on page three, four, six, V is the formula for you guys. So I am quickly just going to put that formula in. Just want to see where my. I know I have the. A study guide somewhere. Let me quickly just. Check where my study guide is. So that I can just copy that. That formula in for you, then when you have it and. Carl, if you can share. 
and uh, your Excel that will also be great. <laughs> so here you can see I'm just showing you quickly. Um, so in the study guide page, Four six. So here they also did the interval, the frequency, midpoint, um, and then you get the frequency times the midpoint. Um, so then in your, your standard deviation, you will basically need to work that out. Then minus in times the mean, so you needed to work out the mean as well. OK, so. I know no, that's that's fine, um, but. So I'm just. Going to add this. But I think the easiest to do this will be. In a form of. Excel um, that you don't need to do it on a calculator or anything um, so that you can set it up. Um, you can always set it up and ask me um, and I'll send it back to you guys um, because I think or oh, oh, let me. I'll check this one tonight. And then I'll post. Uh, Excel spreadsheet because, because this was the same one of last week that I didn't get to. So let me let me just make a mark. Okay, then I'll I'll put this into Excel with the formulas, um, and then you can just change it um, if you get something like this again. OK. OK, so let's get into the next one because this will be. Again. One of the. Questions around. Comp Compound interest and things like that. How many questions is your last assignment? Because you nearly have what, six topics. So just 30. OK, so about four or five questions per topic. OK, so um, so that would also be interesting then to see how and do you six hours oh my word okay um do you get it's a once off or can you do it oh who wants to do a second six hour but i assume it's only a a once off um assignment oh to it Things. OK, so basically two days to <laughs> two, six hours, sure. OK, so Mr. Gonzalez has created a university investment fund. His daughter will start attending university in eight years time. He will deposit 850 rand. So PMT will be minus 850 at the end of every month for the next eight years. So payment per year is 12 times, then N is eight. So in total there's 96 payments, interest is 8.5. 
and your future value is what? Okay, that at least is because six hours is quite long. Okay, so let's quickly check. 850 PMT, 12 times per year, just in case there was something else in there. It's 96, 8.5 interest. Future value is what I get is 116, 298.24. Okay, which is option option one. I assume if you don't use 12 times to get, it might be one of the others. Uh, but at least for this one, um, no problem in getting to to that first option. Was that what you guys also got? If this was one of the ones you needed to do. Okay, let's look at the, the next one. The Moffat King family. Are planning a trip to Vic Falls and want to have. So that is the future value that we want to have. In the account three years from now. The account will pay 14% interest compounded half yearly. What amount must they deposit into the account at the end of every six months? That's interesting. So we will need to work out a PMT. We start off with zero present value. We have, have the minus 45, 500 as a future value. We have the payments per year is two. We've got um, how many years is three? There's going to be six of them. Um, and your interest rate is 14%. And then we'll check what the PMT is. It says zero present value, 45,500. Future value twice a year because it is compounded half yearly for three years, it's six payments, 14% interest. So my PMT is 6360.71, which is option, option four or option D. Okay, so this one again, um straightforward with a calculator the things that was important is to check the half yearly um and then the three years and remember that that is the future to value um i just want to check something because at least if you Added it as a present value, one of it won't be any of the answers. Okay, happy with this one? I think this one is still like the previous one. Yes, Kyle. Sorry, I meant to react. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> it's Monday. <laughs> Just want to make this a bit that I can make it a bit bigger. OK, so let's see what they tell us in this one. A quality control exercise was carried out by Chopchia to estimate the percentage of defective chocolate bars in a large shipment of a thousand boxes with 100 bars in each box. 
20 boxes were chosen at random and every bar in them was checked. The number of defected bars on the, each of the boxes probably were that. Choose the correct statement regarding data collection. The sample unit is 149. Okay, now. The sample unit is 20. The sample is the 20 boxes of chocolate bars that were selected. The variable is the. Ugh. OK, so was B also the one that you guys got? OK, variable, no. The population would have been the thousand. So. So that's also not. Not correct. OK, weird question. I don't know even. And where they got unless if you add all of that together, it is 149. Um, but no, the sample is for 20 boxes. OK. And this was a weird question. They obviously want to confuse you with the boxes and the bars inside and, and those kind of things. But um, remember, we're looking at the boxes. OK, this was also an interesting one when I browsed through the. Let's see if I can make it a bit bigger. You can always then just make it smaller for. OK, so you got the, the, the box and whisker. Um, I assume male and female. Um, then consider the following statements. The Total deviation of the masses of male students is nine kilogram. The distribution of the masses of the male students is skewed to the left. Which one of the following is true? Okay, so let's. OK, first, what is quartal deviation? Is that the same as interquartile range? Sure. OK, so that is what I would have assumed as well. <laughs> then it is Q3 minus Q1 which is 92 minus 74, which is not going to be 9, unless I'm having something wrong here, but that is, what's that, 18. Okay, so A is wrong. So A is wrong, neither A nor B is correct, both A and B are correct. OK, so for me, it's between those two. Carla, I hope you've got a correct one for this as well. <laughs> the distribution of the masses of the male students is skewed to the left. And let's quickly just check that is, what's that, three? Gap is 23 between that. The gap is 16 nearly. So it's definitely skewed. So I would have said I need to look at. So I would have said, yes, it is skewed to the left. It's. Yeah, so if 
if that is skewed to the right, this seems like something like that. So it's the opposite. So I would have said it is skewed to the left. And then only B is correct. Sure. Was that the right answer? Neither B. No. <laughs> Okay. So, so when I when I yes. wrote it, I looked at this photo and I was like, "Ha! Ah, I got the answer!" And then very excitedly and happily selected the wrong one. But you can't go back, so I couldn't correct it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So so you saw it, and this wasn't the same shape. That's why you said it was also incorrect, but. That is skewed to the right, so skewed to the left is just the opposite. Well, exactly. So when I looked at this, I didn't I didn't actually calculate it which way it was skewed, but it looked like it was skewed to the right to me. So then I selected neither A nor B. OK, and you were wrong or right? I'm not sure. I can't review the test yet. They're probably only going to release it tomorrow. Oh, uh, OK, see, so let me quickly show you so if you look at that's the mean or the median so already you can see from 80 to 115 is 35 from 80 to 52 or 58 is 22. so you will have something going like that So it will be nearly the sh same shape, just the opposite. So your skew to the right would have looked, oh, I hate it when my screen does that. So this would have been skewed to the, to the right. So this one is how we have this data skewed to the left. OK, happy with that. Happy, but not happy because I it. made such a simple mistake. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so. Um, and but and that that is nearly, I think, the biggest thing with a lot of these these things is, is that you you see the graph and you, you think, yes, um, but then it's just a simple thing that it's the other way around. So hopefully if you guys get it in the last assignment, then you won't make that mistake again. I don't know why they gave even the other graph, unless it again is different questions. Um, and then for somebody else it might have reflected to to a female component um, but in this instance you only add questions on this graph so again um, but it might be that this certain set of questions for the other graph okay this was also the one we had last time um, and I, I don't have a faintest idea. I couldn't remember at all how to use my calculator for this. Um, and I tried again and I just don't have. Um, so if any of you have done this on the calculator, um, please send me the, the instructions because all of this, I know I, I've put it into my calculator so I can, but then I don't, can't remember how to get to 12 years. So I know you need to flick through the amortization buttons, um, but 
I tried everything and just couldn't get to get to 12 years. So um, I was able to put in all the information needed, but I just could not get to that 12 years. Um, so yeah, please, if somebody can just that have done it, save a, a way to do it on on the calculator. Did anybody of you do it and got the right answer? Oh, well, it's OK, so you used Excel for it, which is. OK, so. Um, Carl, if you can send that sheet to the to the group, it will be great. Um, because I would have probably also done it in in Excel, but then you also need to to set it up nearly from the start and then um, copy and everything with it. Um, I know the, the calculator is is easier. No, it's fine. It, I think the guys can then decide if they want to use it. Um, so yeah, but you it you can see it on the on our chat group. Uh, then at least if somebody wants to use it, um, if nobody, if you if you can't like me can't remember how to use the calculator and you want to use Excel. Um, please, please, Vinja, just look at what what Carl did. Because yeah, I think you will get something like this even in your last assignment. Um, so what they will probably do, and I might be wrong, um, because I have never seen one of those last assignments, but it might be that they look at how the, the assignment was completed and then bring in some of the ones that everyone was nearly struggling with. So nearly have, have a mix of a, a few easy ones and then a mix of a, a few more difficult ones. And let's look at this question. When marginal revenue equals marginal cost, it implies that the company is establishing its shutdown point. I never heard of that before, but expanding its output, minimizing its profit, maximizing its profit. Your. Uh, this is. I probably first would Google this one. Um, was this something that is in your study guide? OK, it's the first time I hear something about shutdown point. Um, so I just Googled it. I don't know. I assume you guys are allowed to use. Use Google. Um, so the profit is maximized. Uh, again, I can't even remember. And if there was a reference to this in the book. So again, sure, something that we're maximizing the profit. OK. So very, and, and that's why they probably give you 
six hours for for the last one as well because things like this um, again is not always that easy and if, if you start now looking for it in your in your study guide and things like that it's especially the, the ones around the definitions You guys still didn't, uh, but you also said you you don't get any any feedback because this was also the one from last time. Yes, Carl. Joss, you saved me so much on this question because it's only because I remember what you put down as your answer that I probably got this one right too. So thanks. Oh, OK. OK, so. <laughs> So that we we did this one in the last time, eh? So I'm I am going to delete this one, but we only focus on all the new stuff. Yeah, and specifically these things that you know, there was a lot of box and whisker in this assignment. It's quite interesting how many of so let's and let's just make this a bit bigger again. Okay, so that is probably 19. That is probably free. So let's see which of five statements is or true. The mean of a data is for. 15. Okay, we don't know that. Because this is, sorry, that is Q1, Q2, or your median. That's Q3, that's max. This is minimum. So we actually don't know. What the mean is. 75% of the data live below 16. OK, that is correct. Because that is Q3, 75% of the data lies below that because that's Q1, 75% of the data will lie above 10 if if that is also in the, the question set. Um, the range of the data is 16. Let's see, 90 minus 3 is 16. 25% of the data lie below 15. No. So 50% of the data that is Q2 lies below 15. So one is wrong, four is wrong. So the answer is two and three. And then hopefully that was correct, Carl. Well, and when so you read it grammatically, these people could have also made it very tricky because if they say 25% of the data is below 15, they're right. 25% of the data is below 15, but so is 30% oh. of the data, so it's 40. So I'm not sure if they were trying to be sneaky there, but yeah. No, they, no, probably not. <laughs> um, because I think with the 75, they just wanted nearly to test the other way around. So yeah, no, they won't, they won't do that in, in one of these. Um, so I don't think you need to worry. We've yeah, we've been caught so many times with some of those wordings. Um, but in this one, I think let's let's stick with at least there wasn't an option two, three, and four. Um, so that might nearly <laughs> be the saving grace, nearly.
OK, so now this was then from the second part that that you shared. So in order to buy a house. I got a loan to be repaid in equal payments over a period of 15 years. OK, so yeah. You need to work out what's the present value. You get your. PMT is equal to the 6500. You've got your monthly, so payments per year is equal to 12. Then your number of years is equal to 15. So that is how many. So 180 payments and interest 15.5. Okay, so let's quickly put that in. So 15.5 interest 12 times per year. Remember the previous one was probably still two times a year, so we need to need to change that. 6500 as your payments. So my present value I get is 453 280.60, which is option D. Cool. Okay, yeah, so you can also use your Excel to to do the um, Excel has very nice um, functions in it to work out your present value, future value and PMT. So um, you can do that as well. OK, let's. OK, so now they go into. Giving a set of data again. So let's just quickly. Make this bigger. OK, so. What? You can do this on two ways. You can arrange all the numbers and then check which one is your mode. Or what I would do is just I would go and check um, these four numbers and check which one. So I would go 140 and see, OK, there's one of them, two of them, Three of them, I write next to it three. I go 183. One of them. I'll go 120. One of them. And I go 161. Okay, actually, none of them. And then I'll pick D. You can type it in Excel, order it, or you can write it out. Um, but but are, for me, it's just easier to check um, the four options that they give me um, if if I then just do a count of them. Um, that that's how I would have done it. Um, but yes, you can you can rearrange them, write them from smallest to biggest. You can put it in Excel and then order it. Um, but for me, it was just easier to check um, which ones, how many of them are in the data set. OK.
OK, cool. Let's look at the next one. This looks like one of the things we had last time as well. I we'll look at Aziz. I think there was in the previous one also mention of Aziz. So let's just quickly check. Aziz is planning to attend college when he graduates from high school four years from now. He has made an arrangement with a father to do the household chores if a dad deposits 3,570 at the end of every six months for the next four years into a bank. The account pays 8.5% interest compounded semi-annually. The father pays an additional 5,515 to account for every 3,570 deposits he made. The first deposit will be made six months from now. How much money will there be in account for Aziz to pay for her college expenses? There is this weird, so I hope. One of you have the answer to this. I nearly felt I would have added the two together. Every six months, so uh, payments per year is two. Interest rate is 8.5. That would be your PMT. Um, it's for four years, so there's about eight payments. So that is what you got. Let me quickly check. And if I missed anything, just shout. Okay, so got the same. Future value eight four seven eight six. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's weird. I don't know why they yeah you know, why they ask it like this. Um Okay, you probably swapped it around, Kyle. The 60 will be your present value and not your future value. Yes. <laughs> um, so you labeled it backwards, but you got it right. Um, yes, that will be your, if I ask for present value, that will be your present value. That will be your future value. Cool. Um, And they, and that's good that you showed both goal because that is they can ask you, um, and again for one group of students they can ask for future value, and for the other group they can ask the the present value. Okay, this was the other one that you shared. Let me just get all the pieces of information. <laughs> OK, 
Okay, so that was for one piece. That was the second piece. Okay, and then, so coefficient of correlation. If I have it correct is Oof. And I'm hoping I'm not making a mistake now. I'm just quickly going to check. Um, if it's not the other way around. Yeah, other way around. So it is your standard deviation divided by your mean divided by 100%. So they give us standard deviation. So you actually for this one, you have all the data, but it's not needed. So let's Yes, I'll look at the. I'll look at that call no problem at all. Um, I didn't realize there was something in the body of the email, so I must go and read it. Um, but I'll do that, and then I will answer even on the group. I missed. <laughs> I missed that totally. <laughs> Sorry, my bad. Um, so yeah, I will check for that for you. Okay, so. Um, 21.843 divided by 170.620 gives us 0 0.12, but if we multiply by 100, it's 12.08%. Okay, this is in O, so that's 12%. Choose any just want to see all these weird questions again or answers. What do I? Use any location because both have good rental prices. Okay, that's not. Choose the location close to the sports park. It has the smallest. OK, so C would have been the correct answer. OK. Perfect call, no worry at all. Um, I'll look at the two that you that you sent and I will I will put it onto a group that we can look at it. Okay, so let's look at at the next one. Okay, and this is again where I will use Excel. Um, so I'm just going to quickly put in the data, then I'll also show you how I did it. Because again, I'm not too good on the calculator with these these types of problems. So let me. I'm just quickly putting all the data into Excel, um, and then I will show it on the screen and what we will look at. Okay, so. And they want us to calculate the mean and the median. 
Okay, so yes, we So the mean in Excel is not a mean function, but there's an average function, which is exactly the same. So mean and then median, there is a median function in Excel. So we've got it as 91.2. Okay, see, so there they want it, you to be confused. Okay, 89, not 88. So there's 91.2, and there's the 85. Okay, so I am also, I will share this on the group as well. Um, so here is the mean and median calculation. So I will put it on our 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 chat so that you guys can use it again. Okay. And let me move some of these to the to the back. I want to get all of these things sorted out first all the um all the stats questions okay there might have been more options um The column that represents the correct frequencies for the data is. OK, so between 0 0.5 and 15.5. So and it looks like all the data, so it would have been 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 would be your first frequencies. It's one of those two. Um, and then between 15.5 and 15.5. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, thirteen. Okay, so then we know that one is also wrong. So Q will be the right one. Okay, we can do exactly the same nearly, but by this time you don't need to go go any further with, with this question. So let's move that also to the back. I think some of these we did last week in any case, but let's Okay, so again, let's look at what they tell us. The council wants to talk to the residents of a street to discuss a proposed traffic calming scheme. The houses in the street are numbered from 1 to 57. Use the, last, uh, <laughs> use the list of random digits below, generated by a software package to identify a random sample of 10 of the houses for the council to visit. Sure. Okay, so houses are numbered from 1 to 57. Okay, so you can only have numbers 1 to 57 in your in your answer set. So let's just check if that number is possible.
Okay, so that is definitely not possible. So I would not have picked that one. Probably B. <laughs> Let's. So first one would be 60. So that is six, uh, 60, 26. Um, sure, so I assume you go this way. So then from 26, Sixty, so that is what. How big is that difference? Or do you go down? This is now interesting. I actually don't know which way around. Sixty minus twenty-six. That gives you fifty-four. So 60, hmm. This now is very interesting. Because that 60 would probably have given me three. Oh, OK, sorry. No, I get it. So you just you don't. So you just skip. OK, so 26. Then five. Then 98 can't be. 60 can't be. 90 can't be. So the next one is 42. Then 49. 93 can't be. 57. 56. 80 can't be. 99. But when you actually pick 6 again, which should not be. So is it when that you do it that way around? This is very time consuming. And then let's do it that way around. So that's 26. 60 can't be. That's 49. That's 50. 99 can't be. 93 can't be. 73 can't be. 10. 5. 90 can't be, can't be, 6, can't have 6 again because we have it already, 47, next one, can't be, can't be, 42, 57, can't be, can't be, can't be, can't be, and 1. Sure, okay. There, that is why it can't be. I, yeah, again, would have been nice if one knows if you actually go horizontal or vertical. Um, apparently, horizontal. <laughs> um, yeah, so be. Okay, so let's check this one. At least this is also to do with data. It might be that I would use Excel again. A factory quality manager investigates the number of defective. He collects the data for 15, work out the standard deviation. OK, so again, I would work out standard deviation for this in Excel. I will show you again. I just want to put in the in the data. 
It's 12, 9, 11, 8, 12, 4, 10, 7, 17, 11, 6, 10, 10, 2, 8. Okay, so I would have put in the data. Let's make it a bit bigger. And then standard deviation. There is a standard deviation and we're working with a sample. So just remember standard deviation of sample. And they set round off to two decimals, I think. So we have three comma six O. So B. Again, I will share this spreadsheet so that you have the mean and median, and now the standard deviation formula in it as well. Hey, okay, let's see. Okay, I'm going to take that to the end. Let's first see if there's more. How's that? <laughs> To do all the data ones first. Okay. Two different types of paint for season and Duracell were compared to see whether one would last longer on a wood surface before chipping or peeling, since the durable Ability of a paint is related to outdoor conditions, exposed to sun, winter, wind, etc. Both paints were tested in 15 different locations. The box and whisker diagrams below summarize the time in weeks it took for each type of paint to start chipping and peeling off. Okay. So let's see what the box and whisker diagram shows that. I just want to check if there was. OK, so. This was answers. I just want to. Okay, so which one is true? Okay, cool. So which one is true? Okay, so let's look at the options. Seventy five percent of the locations that use the Dura seal paint as chipped surfaces of the 55 weeks. Okay, so this year 75% have. So that could be, that could be, that could be still. 50% of the locations that used the four seasons paint at chip surfaces of the uh, <laughs> at chip surfaces between 29 and 65 weeks. OK, so they ask it a bit differently. The year is 50 percent. That is what is in that box. Um, between 29 and. Uh, OK, so it should have been between 29 and. 95 between 29 and 65 is 75 percent um so option two is wrong okay so option two is wrong option two is wrong okay so then that is probably going to be our answer 25 percent of the locations that painted with dura seal already had chips surfaces of the 29 weeks so it should be 50 so that is also wrong okay 
so B is the correct one. OK, happiness with that. Cool. OK, let's look. OK, going to put that till the end. Let's see if there's any. OK, yes, it was. Let me just <laughs> move the things around a bit again. OK, so that was the test and then that was the answer. So let's let's check what we're asking. A group of students studying economics wrote four tests, each counting hundred marks. The marks for the four tests are represented in the box and whiskers. Um, The test for which the range and the median are the same. The test for which the range and the median are the same is. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, so 65, uh, 95 minus 10 is 85, so that's the range. Um, and the median is there. Okay, so not test one, so just be careful. So that is test one, not A. Um, 80 minus five is 75. The median is 50, so it's not test two. 100 minus 40 is 60. That is 80, so not test three, and then 60 minus 20 is 40, and the median is also 40. Cool, so it is option C. Okay, another one for the stats. stem and leaf. So let's look at what is in the stem and leaf. So they tell us note that six and four represents the mark of 64. The median for the marks is, okay, so it is in order. Um, let's just check how many, okay, so that can't be one of them. Um, let's just check. We need median, so it's in the middle. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So there's 24 students. So we want it around 12 and 13. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 and 13. Hmm. This is interesting. I would have set in the middle and would have gotten 82. Let's just check. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay. So 12 on each side. So how we would have worked it out is. 81 plus 83 divided by 2. So that would have given us answer of 82. OK, so that is how, how we would get to the, the median. OK, let's just see. OK, the same one standard deviation. We've done this. <laughs> Take that one out. OK, so the rest is. So let's get the two. Differentiation questions first. I think this one we did last time. As well. Um, 
yes, we did. So it was, I think it was one of these two that, that we worked out where we needed to remember to bring in the fixed cost component. Um, we, we definitely did it last time, so I am going to take this one out as well. I think we did this one as well last time, but let's just for a recap on on this one. We can quickly do this. So yeah, I don't think we did this one. So we need to multiply. Um, so minus two minus three will become positive six Z. Then remember minus two minus one makes it minus three. So already all of them are wrong. Our answer will be C, but let's just quickly get to the other ones. Two times three times two is plus six. Z three minus two. So there it is as well. And then that one will be minus nine because it will be Z one minus one, it's Z zero. So it becomes one and 15 falls away. Okay, cool. This one we did last week as well. Let's just make it bigger. Let's just see. Yeah. Um, remember, we did this as we used. First, we didn't use the X plus 80. We only used the 80. Um, uh, I remember we did this. <laughs> Yo, now we're going quick through this. <laughs> Let me just make this one bigger as well. Let me do all of them. We can then check if we need to. Okay, to replace the roof of its building in eight years time, um, a business sets up savings fund paying into a fund each quarter. Payments start in three months' time. The interest rate is that compounded quarterly. The amount of money that will have accumulated in the fund immediately after the last payment. Okay, can't remember if we did this. So let's just write down a few things. So PMT will be. 9280. Then quarterly means four times per year. Or I think it was eight years. So that would be 32 periods. 10%, 10.4% interest. And then what's our future value? Okay, so 9280 BMT, four times a year for eight years, that is 32 periods. 10.4% interest, future value I get is the same as this, 454580. And so that is also the future value that I got as well. And let's quickly check the next one. 
a loan of 20,000 with an interest rate of 14% per annum compounded monthly is to be amortized by equal monthly payments. The first payment is due at the end of each month. What is the monthly? Okay, so monthly payment is at least easy to get with a calculator it's for amortization that is more. So we know the loan is 20,000, so that will be your, your present value, 14% interest. It is monthly, so it's 12 times per year or four years. Um, so that is, out. there it goes again, 48. And then we can work out the PMT. So it's 20,000 as your present value, 14% interest, 12 times a year for four years. So that's 48 periods. And my PMT, what I got was five four six point nine point five three okay. cool and then the last one as a house okay so this is very similar nearly to um the car one that we had um it quickly buys a house for 500,000, has to pay 20% deposit, let's say 5,000. Times with 20%, so it's 100,000, so you takes out the loan for 400,000. Why does this look like one that we did last time, but let's just <laughs> Um, the loan is amortized over a period of 20 years. Monthly. Twenty times twelve is two hundred and forty. Oh, and they tell, okay, so we now need to work out the principle. So that is again where we need to set up that. Um, where we need to set up the, the schedule. So that again, I would rather use Excel for that and not So you basically need to start with a 400,000. You need to say what's the interest. Then you've got the payment. Then it's what's left. You need to repeat it um, because you want now that principal repaid at the end of the second month. OK, so again, Robert, do that in Excel or if you remember how to use um, the calculator. Just I don't know if how, you, how easy you are with working this out on the calculator or if you rather use Excel. Um, I have a financial calculator or sometimes I use a calculator soup from the okay. internet. It has all okay. the sorts of calculators. Okay, perfect. It makes life easier. Okay, no, perfect. Yeah, because again, um, rather use for because I'm not even going to try now to even remember how to do it on my HP. Um, but yes, <laughs> you can use the calculators online as well because that is definitely easier. 
He is. Cool. Okay, so that is it for tonight. Thank you very much, Say, for your time for the whole semester. Ah, no problem at all. Let me just show my face as well, <laughs> at least. Um, so, so good luck for the last one. Um, and then hopefully everybody passes that that you don't you guys don't need to do this again next next year. Thank you very much, sir. Cool. Uh, have a good <laughs> evening and good luck with the last one. Bye. Cheers. Bye.